All right, this is grade four, module four, lesson one. And in this lesson, we're going to be identifying some key geometric things like points and lines and line segments, rays and angles. And plus, we're going to, you know, notice that these things are, exist out in the real world in uh, familiar shapes that we see every day. Um, so let's get started. So this lesson for teachers, um, it, it's a lot of vocabulary, and we'd like to try and teach the content in the context of an activity rather than just, here's a flashcard on points, and here's a flashcard that shows a ray. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go through all of these steps, and we're going to draw it over here. And uh, as we do that, students are going to begin to learn what is a straight edge? What is a point? And how do we how do we notate whether it's a line or a line segment? And so let's let's get started. So first it says uh, draw two points W and X. Now what that means a point uh, is it's like a dot. It's an indication of location. It doesn't have width. It means it doesn't stretch out and it doesn't have height. It's just a location. And so we've got a couple of points. And they wanted us to label it W and X. So let's do that. So we're going to label this W and this one X. And I suppose we could have swapped that if we wanted to. Um, and then it says use a straight edge to draw W, X. Now the thing I want you to notice right here is this line is just a straight line right here. It's just a straight line. Um, it does not look like this, or actually maybe I should better like this. It doesn't say WX like that. So I'm going to get my eraser and erase that. Okay, and so what that means, this and this are different. This means it's a line segment and the it stops. The line stops, so it makes it a segment. These little arrows mean it goes forever, so that's called a line. So this is a line. This is a line segment. All right, so I'm going to erase. Let's see if I can erase this. Yeah, so I'm going to erase that. And let's zoom out. And let's get back to the problem. So it says to draw a line segment WX. Now what that means is it means it's going to start at one point and go straight to the other and it, I was supposed to use a straight edge but I can't use a straight edge on a podcast so on a screencast so I'm just going to try and make it as straight as possible. Teachers you're going to want to give your kids some sort of straight edge. The side of a book or a ruler. Uh, it does not have to be super, something super expensive. In fact, generally, I tell my kids to use the side of like their, their calculator or the side of a book. So the next step, draw a new point that is not on the line segment WX, and we're going to label it Y. So here's a point. We could have put it anywhere, but I put it there. All right, so we're done with A, we're done with B, we're done with C. Now question or step D says draw the ray W, Y. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. So the thing I want you to see is it goes like this, and then there's this little thing right here. So that means it's a ray, and you can see that there's no arrow here, there's an arrow here. So what that symbol means is the ray starts at W, and it goes to Y, but it keeps going forever. So it has a start, but no end. And that's what this ray means. So I'm going to zoom out. And it's, it's important that we get the correct direction. It starts at W and goes to Y. And it goes forever. So it starts at W and it goes to Y, but it keeps going forever. Alright, so that's a ray. That's the ray W. Y. So we're done with D. Now 
draw a new point that is not on the ray or on the line. And we're going to label it Z. So it's got to be a point that cannot be on the ray, WY, and it can't be on the line segment, WX. And we're supposed to label it Z. So I don't know. Let's put it right here. And we're going to call that Z. All right, done. Now F says construct WZ, the line WZ. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in there. And what does that mean? So this is a perfect example. So you see this has no arrows, but this does. That means this is a line that goes on forever in both directions. This is a line segment. It starts at W, ends at X. So the line WZ. So let's zoom out and it's the line WZ. So it's got to go through W and Z, but it goes forever in both directions. And it's okay that I kind of crashed into the letter W. That's all right. And so that's the line WZ, and we just finished that. Now we're on G. Identify the angle Z. W, X. Okay, so now what that means, the angle Z, W, X right here, and what that means is we have an angle that goes through these points, and the um, corner, so to speak, of the angle is the W. This is the vertex. It's the corner of the angle. And we've got to use the letters Z, W, and X. So I'm going to lock scroll back out. So Z, W, and X. So here's Z, here's W, here's X. So that means the angle that they're talking about is right here. And that's the arc that they want for angle Z, W, X. That's G. Now we're on the last one, which is H. Identify another angle. Okay, so another angle that I see is um, this angle right here. So the three letters that we're going to use and uh, is W, I'm sorry, Y, W, X. All right, so the angle is Y, W, X. And that middle letter has to be the corner of the angle, the vertex of the angle. Corner is like a common word. It's not the proper word for it. And so since the angle is y, w, x, we're going to put the arc right here to indicate the angle. Now, students might ask, well, what if you, you did angle x, w, y? Would that be okay? And let's, let's trace those letters. Here's the x, here's the w, here's the y. Since the w is the middle letter, and it's the corner, it's the vertex. This is an also a, an acceptable way to identify this blue angle. Um, the only thing that would not be acceptable would be if the W is not in the middle. The W has to be in the middle. Boy, that was a long slide. Let's go to this next slide, and it'll be our last one. So this, so this is cool. This is where we're just supposed to identify things like rays and lines and line segments and angles in real life. And I'm not going to do all of these. That's a lot of work. So they've got some three common items in real life. And let's look for a ray in the die. So we've got the die here. And let's look for a ray. And so since we don't see one right off the bat, what we're going to do is we were told by the directions to you know, feel free to extend some lines and so I'm going to put a point here, and I'm going to put a point here, and oh, let's label this A, and let's label this B. And I can see that I have a ray AB, which means I'm going to zoom in. It's going to be AB, and because the ray started at A and went to B and kept going, we're going to do that. Now, you know, some people might say, well, what if you do this, like B, A, but then have the ray go backwards like this, because this still means it starts at A and then it shoots off to B. 
you can't really, I mean, the convention, the kind of the rule we all agree to is that the ray always shoots off to the right when we're writing the symbol. Now, obviously, when in real life, the rays don't always go to the, the right, like in this case right here, it's going off kind of to the left. But when we write the symbol, we always write the symbol with the ray going to the right. It's kind of a curious math rule. All right, and let's do, oh, one, another one. Let's do a line segment. So here's a line segment. Oops. Uh, here's a line segment, and let's do a line segment on the clock. All right, so the line segment on the clock. Well, let me call this C. Let me call this D. And a line segment would, would look like this. Whoa, right there. It has a start and an end. And that's DC or CD. We can do it either way. So on the clock, our line segment is CD, and we have a line with no arrows. Now if we wanted to, I'm going to put over here, or we could have done DC, and that would be fine also. And uh, let's do one last one. Let's do the angle. So for the angle, um, on, let's use the clock again. So on the clock, let's do, call this E, call this F, and call that G, and where, what is the name of our angle? So if we want to name our angle, we know the G has to be in the middle. I mean, sorry, the F has to be in the middle because it's the corner, it's the vertex. And so we're going to say angle G. F E is an appropriate name for that angle. And that wraps up grade four, module four, lesson one.